So a while back, I did a video entitled seven things that Christians just need to stop saying. And since then, I've thought of three more things that I'm hearing a lot of Christians say that are not biblically accurate. So if you find yourself saying any of these three things that I'm gonna talk about in this video, you may want to consider finding something else to say instead. And so saying number one is whenever Christians say, I feel like I have disappointed God. Now, the reason why we should never say that we disappointed God is because the actual definition of the word disappoint means to fail to meet the expectation or the hope that someone may have of you. So basically it paints the picture that God is up in heaven and he doesn't really know what you're gonna do. He doesn't quite know your next move. He's kind of like sitting on pins and needles like you're watching a football game and you're hoping that you're gonna win but all of a sudden your favorite quarterback throws an interception and you're like, oh man, I didn't know he was gonna do that. I'm so upset, I'm so angry. It paints this picture that God doesn't really know what you're going to do and whenever you do something or make a decision that is outside of his will, it catches God off guard and now all of a sudden God had some sort of expectation that you were gonna do one thing Thing, but instead you did something different and as a result, God is disappointed in you. But the good news is that the word of God reminds us that it is impossible for us to catch God off guard or to disappoint him. Notice what it says here in Psalm 139. It says, O oh Lord, you have examined my heart and know everything about me. Let's just stop right there. What the writer is saying is that God already has examined your heart and he knows everything that's going on inside your heart and everything that's going on in your life. Notice it says, you know when I sit down or stand up. So not only does he know what's going on in your heart, he knows your very actions as well before you even do it. Then it goes on to say, you know my thoughts even when I'm far away. So now we see God knows our heart. He knows the actions that we're gonna take before we even take any actions. And he also knows the very thoughts that we have in our mind before those thoughts even enter into our mind. Continuing on, it says, you see me when I travel and when I rest at home, you know everything I do. You know what I am going to say even before I say it, Lord. So now we see we're adding another layer where God knows what you're going to say before you even utter those words that you think might offend God. Then it goes on to say, I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. So basically he's saying, now I can't even get away from you. You know every place that I go. So my friend, the next time you find yourself saying those words, God, I just really met, let you down. Like I committed some crazy sin and Lord, I just disappointed you. You may want to consider using the word displease instead because it is possible for us to displease the heart of God, but it is impossible, my friend, for us to disappoint God because God knows everything before we ever do it, everything before we ever think it, and everything before we ever say it. The second thing that I hear a lot of Christians saying that we just need to stop saying is, I just can't forgive myself. Typically, you'll hear somebody say that whenever they've committed some huge sin, whether it's adultery or uh, theft or looked at pornography when they promised they weren't going to do that anymore or whatever it is, and they get so angry at themselves and they lock themselves in this pit of guilt and despair and they say you know what i've just committed something so huge i just i just can't seem to forgive myself now let me give you three reasons why we should never say those words number one in the scriptures there is no example found anywhere where someone has to forgive themselves or they are trying to forgive themselves in the scriptures, there's only two types of forgiveness that we see. One is more horizontal, where we have to forgive those who have sinned against us. The other is more vertical, whenever we have to go to God and ask God to forgive us. But there is no type of forgiveness that occurs inwardly or internally where we can forgive ourselves for something we have done. 
The second reason why we need to stop saying, I just can't forgive myself, is because whenever we sin, we sin primarily against God, which means God is the one we have offended, and therefore he is the one who is in power, who is able to grant us or pardon us forgiveness. You know, whenever you look at the New Testament word for forgive, many of the meanings of that word refer to a judge that is pardoning someone or to set a prisoner free, right? So it's it's the act of the person who is being offended or the person who's in power who has the decision to forgive the person that has offended them. To suggest that we have the ability to forgive ourselves would be elevating ourselves to the very place of God, which is not a Christian belief, but rather a new age belief. The third reason why we should never say, I can't forgive myself is because whenever we say those words, Essentially, what we're doing is we are rejecting the free gift of grace and love and forgiveness that the Lord God wants to bestow upon us. God is saying, look, I have separated your sins as far as the east is from the west. He says in Hebrews 10, 17, your sins and your lawless acts, I will remember no more. So when God says, I'm forgiving you, I'm not remembering these anymore. I've separated these sins from you. Who are we to say, God, I don't want that. I don't want to receive your free gift of forgiveness. Instead, I'm just going to harbor all of this condemnation upon myself because I feel like if I do that, it's going to somehow make myself feel better or atone for my sins. So whenever we say I can't forgive myself, what we're really saying is we are rejecting the very free gift of forgiveness that God wants to bestow upon us. Notice that when King David sinned with Bathsheba, when he committed adultery with her, he said this. He said, against you and you alone have I sinned. I have done what is evil in your sight. David understood that his sin was first and foremost primarily a sin against God and not against himself or someone else. Joseph also understood this in Genesis 39 when he was tempted by Mrs. Potiphar. He also says, no one here has more authority than I do. He has held back nothing from me except you. Speaking of Potiphar says, hey, you have held back your wife from me. And then he says, because you are his wife, how could I do such a wicked thing? It would be a great sin against myself. No, Joseph says, my sin is ultimately and first and foremost against God, right? So whenever we sin, we are sinning against God, which means God is the only one who is able to grant us forgiveness. And the third and final thing that I want to talk about in this video is whenever you hear Christians say, well, that's just who I am. You need to accept me the way I am. Now, the reason why this one gets under my skin is because, and by the way, I'm not necessarily talking about a personality trait. For instance, you're introverted or you're shy or you're outspoken or you're outgoing or whatever. Those things are God-given. I'm talking about whenever there's some sort of character flaw or some sort of sin issue in your life or uh, a negative mentality or a bad attitude or something along those lines that's going on inside of you. And when people try to check you on it, when people try to hold you accountable for it, when people try to point these things out in your life, instead of adjusting your life, you use the excuse, well, this is just who I am. This is just how I am. This is just how God has created me to be. You need to accept me. The reason why this gets under my skin so much is because it is basically our way of rejecting the Holy Spirit's power to sanctify us and transform us into the image of God. What we are basically saying without saying it is, God, I don't believe that your spirit is strong enough to change me, even though I see areas in my life that are not lead, uh, lining up with your will and your perfect character, I don't believe it's possible for you to transform me, so I'm going to make the conscious decision to stay the way I am. You know, the Bible says in Romans 12 too, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you 
think. When we let God transform us based on the way that we think, we are receiving the sanctifying power of the Holy Spirit to transform us into the image of Christ, which is the whole point of why Jesus died for us, is not only to forgive us of our sins, but to cleanse us and to mold us into his image. So the next time you find yourself saying these three things, number one, I just disappointed God. You may want to consider saying, I just pleased him. The second one, I can't forgive myself. Understand that, no, you can't forgive yourself because only God has the power to forgive you. So yeah, that's a true statement. You don't, you can't forgive yourself. And then the third thing is, you know what? I just, I can't change. This is who I am. You need to accept me. We need to switch that around and say, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I can be transformed into the image of Christ. So I'd love to hear your thoughts. What are your thoughts? Do you find yourself saying any of these things in your life? Let me know in the comment section below. If you found this video helpful in any way, feel free to share it with a friend. Also, if you haven't done so already, I would love it if you would subscribe. Check out some of the other videos on this channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time on The Beat.